getting through to people and, and making people see that there, it's going to be a great night of fights and how important it is. Cannot stress that enough to come out and support these local shows. That they're too important not to. Absolutely spot on. Next up, we have got John Johnson versus Carl Holland. Yeah, John, a guy I know very well. Carl coming out of the, the fighting for fitness camp. Obviously, yeah. big influence from the Aspinalls as well. There. Yeah, he's uh, he's two and zero. He made his debut on UKFC in September and won by a triangle sub in round one. And he fought at Kingdom Five as well. The last time out and put on a great performance. Yeah, seems like a, a really good prospect. Takes on John Johnson, a guy with four wins, one loss, and a guy with really really slick jujitsu, in my opinion. He. he both, both guys are well-rounded in this fight, but I think where John certainly has the edge is, is going to be on the ground. Yeah, Carl is definitely more of a striker, but like I said, you know, being around the Aspinalls and uh, yeah, the Jiu-Jitsu level over there, being able to see how his Jiu-Jitsu yeah, well, matches up. You know, he picked up his blue belt probably, I think it was about a year ago from Andy Aspinall. So he's competent on the mat, he's, 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 it's not that, you know, this is not a striker versus grappler. John himself has got some really good stand-up too, so. Do you think that plays a part when a, a young fighter has someone in the gym that kind of has that legacy, I suppose, behind them? You think it makes an impact that they feel a little bit more confident, maybe? Yeah, John Johnson also, the, the younger brother of Scott Johnson, professional flyweight. So he's, he's got an older brother who can guide him and support him and train with him and teach him. And John, another guy with a lot of support here tonight. Coming off a loss against Mo Safi in his last fight, John, so he'd be he'd be wanting to get back in the W column. Both guys young in their careers. Coming off a loss, a loss, isn't he, Johnson? Yeah, against Mo Safi. Um, I think the wrestling was a factor in that fight, so it'd be, be good to see how John's wrestling looks tonight. Is that something he's improved on? Because obviously, when, when, when Jiu Jitsu is your, your, your main weapon, then obviously the wrestling is the key to unlocking those opportunities. Certainly looks confident tonight, John Johnson. Fight number 11 now, on the way. Goes so quickly, doesn't it? As we progress up the card, you'll just see those little things we talked about become more and more evident. The, the composure, the not rushing your work, the fakes and the feints, you know, good shape, good movement in the cage, mm -hmm. looking to be in the centre. Nice pace and start from these two. 
nice calf kick from yeah Carl 30 Holland. seconds in first real good strike landed by Carl John looking like he just wants to hold the centre for now he's starting to back his man up are we going to see John looking for a takedown off the cage soon Oh, there's the guillotine. Oh, yeah. that, that, that could be, that could be tight. That looks tight to me. That is on. That is very tight. Yeah, that that could be over. That's tight. Oh, it's tough. Yeah, nice. Great win for John Johnson. That. That is real slick. First round submission. Jumped on it straight away. I knew if if he got into them situations with Carl, he was going to be a level better. And you know, to pull that off takes a certain amount of confidence as well, you know. Yeah, Carl, Carl Holland's coming in here on a, a two-fight win streak. And that's an excellent win for John Johnson there. Puts him back in the win column. Yeah, he was very patient, wasn't he? Took his time and... Yeah, and listen, the, the more you do that, the more good things will happen for you. It was Carl in the end who, who come out there and forced it. I think, he, I think he didn't need to shoot no, on John. Didn't. You know, if I was if I was in the corner of Carl Holland tonight, I would have said, "Let's keep this on the feet." John Johnson's got the jujitsu mm -hmm. on us. Uh, what What do you say to a fighter like that? Who I mean, he hasn't even gotten an opportunity to get into it for it to be over yeah. so quick. You know. Yeah. Th this is where those internal assets matter. Now is like, are you, are you gonna go and beat yourself up? Are you, are you gonna? blame yourself gonna blame everyone else or you're just gonna literally take the feedback get back to gym back to drawing board and get moving forward absolutely it's frustrating but that's the game that's the game we love the game no, right what, <laughs> one man's loss is another man's game this is yeah. this john johnson five and one now Like he hadn't missed a beat either. Asking for the belt there. <laughs> Lots of bantamweight fights on the card as well, including a bantamweight title fight. So he's certainly putting himself out there. Yeah, 100%. The all important post win pick. <laughs> <laughs> If you were to have a fight, Lydia, what would you walk out to? Do you know what? It's a question I ask myself all the time. Um, I think uh, ACDC back to black. Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow, I love that. I love that. <laughs> or Jordan McCann, one or the other. I don't know. I prefer the ACDC. <laughs> I know, right? It changes all the time. It's whatever, you know, change it up. What, what, what would you say is in your music playlist? We were on the this with Dean. Say Dean. that again. What would you say is in your music playlist? Oh, it's very, very... You want me to take a look? Live right now. It's varied. Do you know what? I, I listen from solfeggio frequencies to, like, heavy metal. You know what I mean? It's really? Yeah, I, it's I very, would very, never very, imagine you'd listen to that well. Oh, yeah. Pantera, one of my favourite bands of all time. Do you know Pantera? I don't. Um, for shame. Uh, yeah. I was, I was part of my head in confidence thinking you wouldn't ask that. <laughs> you were found out. Yeah. <laughs> Time for some big boys. We've seen a lot of yeah, pads away some flyweights. You know what? I think it's about time. We had a couple of big, strong middleweights in the cage. Now, we've uh, seen the speed and the technique of the younger weight classes a lot. Sorry, the smaller weight classes a lot this evening. The flyweights, lots of bantam weights. Elliot McGibbon against Ryan Hennessy. Now, I was told this is a fight that has been scheduled three times really? before. So, it's a fight that's finally happened. It's a fight that these guys have both prepared for they're both known about so it should be interesting to see how these guys get on against each yeah, other yeah and listen if you if you've been matched against the guy three times and done fight camps or even on fight camps like that guy's gonna have spent a lot of time on your mind and yeah you've done a lot of training for that particular fight McGibbon obviously fights out of Urban Kings he's he's five and two he just received his purple belt and he's got two wins by TKO and one guillotine I don't know much about Elliot, but I know a little bit about his opponent, Ryan. Well, Elliot, you know, he just lost his last fight in FCC, but he was on a three-fight win streak before that, so it'd be interesting to see how he bounces back after, after a loss, after being on such a good streak. 
you know, I'm speaking to the guys backstage, and, you know, a few of them are coming off the back of a loss and have had great performances here tonight. And it's super interesting to, you know, hear them talk about, like we're saying, the mindset, I suppose, of having to get back into the gym. Sam Captain, I think, was only out for two years and yeah. came off the back of a loss. And he was saying, like, the, the mental fortitude that it, it takes to stay quiet. And you have people talking, saying, oh, you lost your last fight. And we see so many times that when fighters do lose a fight, the first thing they want to do is get back in there, right? It seems very difficult that, you know, to let them pace themselves, like, take time out, refocus, regroup, and then get back in there. So it's very admirable to see fighters coming back from the losses and putting on great performances. It's a big mental challenge, isn't it? It can either make or break you. But yeah, you are right. It's almost like natural instinct when you lose a fight to kind of want to get back in there straight away. But sometimes it just does make more sense to kind of take some time, regroup, especially if it's something you need to work mm. on. There's no harm in, yeah, in, in think, taking look, a break. That's the ultimate thing. Mm. Like, these guys are amateurs for a reason. Yeah. They're not the finished article. And you've got to realise that every time they come up short, it's an opportunity to grow. Absolutely. When, when you're winning, it's easy to not look at yourself and, and get the middle mm -hmm. out. But when you're losing, you've really got to, as you said, regroup, yeah. make some changes, adjust, mm -hmm. and then go again. I mean, from your perspective, Dean, like, I, I don't want to make it sound like you've been in the game. You're like some old man here. But I mean, you, you've, 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 you've got the experience there. You're, you're someone who we look to for you know, the blueprint on how to do things. And do you imagine it's a little bit more difficult and different for young fighters now because of maybe social media and because there's a lot of back chat and that's something maybe like... Yeah, no, it can definitely influence people's mm. like mindset and how they approach things. And again, I just think like the, the, the guys who work quietly and just mm. crack on behind the scenes, yeah. they're going to be the guys who perform the best. And sometimes you can get too involved in your social media hype mm. and making sure you're putting content out of every single workout you do when actually the you know the, the crux of this is what's going on with the technical tactical development so Absolutely. yeah it's a fine balance isn't it with, with today's age in the sense that you want to be able to self-promote yourself it's about doing it the right way and yeah knowing and, and, how to market yourself as opposed no, to making everything no, about filming don't, don't get too busy on the market and that you forget to do the yeah. training um, but the the ryan hennessy camp is is a very strong camp at trident mma Harry McKnight, super high level black belt, Tim Barnett in the corner as well. Real experience, UK MMA veteran, former Obama champion. So two really strong teams here going head to head. Ryan Hennessy's done a lot of sparring with Hayda Khan, a guy from, from our gym as well back in the day. So I've seen him in action and he's, he's very strong and he's very powerful. Here we go, big boys, Elliot McGibbon against Ryan Hennessy. I was watching uh, Elliot McGibbon during Ryan's walk and he was eyeing him up the whole time. Beautiful takedown, straight into it. No time wasted there for Elliot McGibbon. Puts his cards on the table. Wants this fight on the ground, I don't blame him. Oh, oh, bit of Hennessy there. using the cage there. Didn't save him though. Ah, oh, quality jujitsu here now on to take the back of Ryan Hennessy. Twenty seconds in and couldn't have been a perfect, more perfect start. Yeah, beautiful control. So we've seen lots of guys getting takedowns tonight, but not really able to consolidate the position. And Elliot McGivens just done that perfectly. Yeah. Transitions to the back again. This hook on the top leg as well is very, yeah. great, very great interesting. Great super control, yeah, mm -hmm. a, a allows you to turn your your opponent away every time. Ryan's trying to turn in. This out. Oh, he's under the neck already. He's not under the chin. Sorry, but this could be, this could be over. Looks super tight. 
the face bar, but Ryan Hennessy's doing a great job of getting his hips away. Elliot Gibbon. He did a good job of fighting the hands there. Resets very well on the back, lines up the hips again. Great control by Elliot. Good reversal from Hennessy. Ryan's done well to turn this around a little bit. Ryan's now looking for the back. Oh, I think someone's mouth guard just got on there. Yeah. Really impressed with the, the wrestling of Elliot. Coming out of a camp like Irvin Kings, though, that shouldn't be a surprise. And again, being a middleweight, he's, he, he's got great training partners and his coaches. Good first round. Obviously, there's a lot of energy expended when you, you know, attacking, chain and take down, trying to finish submissions. And it's always interesting to see how guys fade the body wrestle. Mm -hmm. Also, the adrenaline of, you know, the feeling of almost getting the submission yeah, win. You know, yeah. feeling, that, feeling it so close and then... Oh, that yeah, can be, that really that can be a dumb. big anti-climax yeah. in itself. <laughs> How will Ryan Hennessy adapt now and what will he do differently in this round to stop Elliot McGibbon getting those takedowns? Oh, the oh. round. Straight back to the wrestling. I don't like it when guys come fighting with that underhook a little bit too early. Sometimes they'd be better utilising a cross face first just to try and bring their opponent up a little bit. I feel like going for the underhook straight away is a bit too defensive. Just, it's not that it's too defensive, it's that you're trying to bicep kill someone and underhook has power because of the legs. Oh, oh nice. nice shots here from oh, Ryan Hennessy starting to unload. But he cannot sleep on the striking of Elliot McGibbon. Through a knee to the body there, might have caught the head, but certainly knees. not the intention of Ryan. Oh, big uppercut now. And if Ryan Hennessy can start to stop the takedowns, then the dynamic of this, this fight can change. And you just see the difference from round one to round two. You know, the, the ability to finish. Mm -hmm. Start to slip away from you with these takedowns. D this cage work, you know, it's, it's like, it takes so much oh. energy from you. I can't explain how hard it is. If you're sitting at home and you don't really know what this guy's feeling like working for these takedowns. But look, with a minute left now, Ryan Hennessy's in a position where he can do good damage and take mm -hmm. this round. Because the round was close enough. Yeah. 
And where does this leave the gas tank of Elliot McGibbon for round three? Oh, he gets the takedown. And that is the sort of resilience you need in these type of fights. And conditioning. Taking it back again. Oh. Well, he's doing a good job of fighting the hands. Yeah, I think, I think Elliot's got to be mindful here about not burning his arms out mm -hmm. as well. Can he get under the chin? Oh, this looks tighter. Ryan Hennessy isn't going to give him anything for free. When you're directly under your opponent like that with a rear naked choke, I mean, it looks like you can easily just slip it in, but the weight of your opponent. Yeah, e even that's tiring for you. Mm -hmm. I think Ryan potentially Ryan. needs a finish now. Big deep breath by Alan McGibbon in this corner, though. Mm -hmm. Well, from both guys, to be fair, it's a high pace. It, like I said, when you mix in that much wrestling, especially yeah. on the cage, it yeah. really takes it out of you, man. Doesn't matter what your level is, you're going to get tired. Third and final round between Elliot McGibbon and Ryan Hennessy. Nice show of respect there. Yeah. Again, you know, this is just more time for Elliot to recover here. He's just took 20 seconds. Nice oh, that was a nice spin back, back kick to the body. Straight too back easy. to the body lock. Oh, too easy, mate. Yeah, that's the right way to describe it. Into half guard now. I think he's got the wrist ride as well. Such smooth transitions to the back mm. this whole fight it's from Elliot McGibbon yeah beautiful jiu -jitsu. it's great to see when a guy's got his takedowns and his jiu jitsu just working in tandem mm -hmm. Elliot McGibbon's got time here And it's the classic with jiu-jitsu as well, you know, position before submission. It's just, it's one of those things. It's so easy to rush it. And you see people rush all the time in these yeah. good positions. And he's got to be careful Ryan doesn't turn into a male. Very back on top of him though. So impressed with the, the, mm. the grappling work of Elliot McGiven here. And for Ryan in those bottom positions, yeah. it's like smothering, you know, yeah, it's like no, drowning. Look, this is this is professional level mm. grappling in my opinion. And, and I know Ryan Hennessy is no slouch on mm. the ground either. I can vouch for him, he's, he's, he's a well-rounded fighter, so, you know, credit to Elliot McGibbon. Back on the back again. These transitions have been so, yeah. so elite. He's adamant that this is going to be an RNC finish. <laughs> we, we were talking about this before, Lid, the, the hardest submission to finish, the rear naked choke, but the most common. Yeah. And that's because oh, that's 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 in. It's usually when guys oh. give up. Ryan Hennessy has not out. given up. That was slick work by Elliot McGibbon. Oh, he's out. Oh, he's gone. Oh, oh, he's gone oh, out. He's, he's gone. He's gone. Amazing wow. finish wow. from Elliot McGibbon. That was fantastic. He was looking for that all night long. He really was. And he persevered and got it late in the third round. So impressive. 
like you said, uh, that was a, a really high level display of grappling in that fight. Mm -hmm. And it's that hook on that top leg. I'm going back to the gym on Monday. That's the first thing I'm going to start drilling. And like you say, Dean, it's about having that control. He's controlling the, or was controlling the, the, the body for if he, if Ryan yeah. was going to turn in on us. Yeah. Some, you know, you see guys sometimes, they got nine takedowns in a round. Well, that means they can't control a person. Most times I take one down, that's the only takedown I need. They don't, they're, they're down now till the round's over. So, you know, great, great show of the all round grappling aspects of his game there from Elliot McGibbon and do you know what he didn't force the takedowns either he, he, he got Ryan Hennessy's respect on the feet first and that's important absolutely nice show of camaraderie there between the two guys yeah again two real top gyms I mean, these are the fights where, you know, uh, the corner camps yeah. <laughs> are so important, right? You know what I mean? To see. Yeah, I think Urban Kings have had a great night tonight as well. Yeah, they have. I was just going to say, Dean, you can look at someone like Elliot McGibbon now, he's, he's six and two. He's clearly got like really high level um, jiu-jitsu and a good all-round game. He landed some nice strikes as well. W when do you think he makes that step to being professional? Like I said, his, his grappling to me is look professional standard. The stand up, if I, if I was his coach, I'd want him to just tidy his boxing up a little bit and, you know, be happy to stick a guy like that into the pro ranks. Especially if the work ethic in the gym's there and based on that performance, you'd assume it is because if you can come and wrestle a guy like Ryan Hennessy for nine minutes, yeah. he's super fit. Mm -hmm. Super fit. There's, Absolutely. There's a reason wrestling's two frees in the Olympics because if he couldn't have three fives because everyone would be asleep. <laughs> if you want it, you know what I mean. So <laughs> very true. Very wrestling, very wrestling true. for long periods is, is very energy sapping. And when you see a do it, a guy do it well, it's always impressive for me. <laughs> this is the thought it was going to decision. <laughs> it was a bit off on that one. Beautiful. Okay, you guys, I'm going to try and get a couple of words with him backstage. I will leave you to it. I will be back very soon. Yeah, I'll chat to you soon.